right now. What's your name? <laughs> Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Is he, is he rich? rich? Is, is he, he rich, rich like, like me? me? Has he taken anytime, anytime to show to show, show you what you need what to, to, live, need to live. live? You know what? Tell it to me, I forgot the Tell words right there. What? Uh, welcome to the. I Bushwick forget Bears. all the words. Hi, Those are the words. Welcome to the Bushwick Bears. Yeah. Welcome to the Bushwick Original. Bears. <clears throat> that works really that well a, for I, a I, Zoom delay because there's a, also repetition of each of the lyrics. It's, it's, yeah, right. Unintentionally. I, uh, I really, uh, I like that song. But what was the song, song again? What, I swear uh, to God, every time we do a song, it's three three out of four times it's a song I don't know. Is that the zombies? 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 Yeah, it's yeah. the zombies. My dad, when I was young. Oh, uh, yes, I do know that song, but I haven't. Wow, that was a really bad rendition, Jericho. Yeah, I'm not a very good singer. <laughs> I thought we were pretty I'm, good. I can, I can play. No, it's I can, fine. I fucked it up. I didn't know. <laughs> my when I was young, my dad used to tell me that that was Rob Zombie's dad. <laughs> that, was the zombies. that was one of the jokes. My dad had like five jokes. He told me all every, those the, over and over every time. That was one of them. You know, yeah, I know uh, where Rob you get Zombie's it from. Dad. You know, Rob Zombie like, only lives like an hour outside the city. Feels yeah. like we should live an hour outside of hell. And of yeah, dra- so- of, of uh, aside of um, oh god, where was he from? Lithuania? Where was Dracula from? Transylvania. Oh, Roma- Roma- yes. Well, Romania. Romania. Transylvania yeah. is fictional, right? But Romania is like where the real Dracula. But Transylvania is Transylvania is real. There's a real Transylvania. It's in Romania. There's yeah. a real Transylvania, yeah. Oh, in it's Romania. In Romania, okay. though. Castlevania yeah. is what's fake. Um, Castlevania. Castlevania. Awesome anime on Netflix. I, I'm sorry, I stepped on your story, Jericho, um, about how you're dumb and you thought Rob Zombie was this guy's kid. <laughs> oh, what? You mean I had the, the, na- the naive, naive uh, playfulness of a child when I was a child? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Me, right? Isn't that so funny when people like tell you like misinformation your whole life and like you grow up like learning things wrong and then when somebody tells you like the correct way something is they just go why did you know that stupid and it's like well it's because I was misinformed yeah someone <laughs> taught me incorrectly you fuck yeah <laughs> god that's called learning and how can you be progressive without progressing from a place of ignorance thank you the public I'm the most progressive system. person everybody knows <laughs> <laughs> it's because you progress so much from state of ignorance on to the next right, state yeah, that makes me the most progressive dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, to be the like most progressive, school. you have to start out super dumb and hateful, and then you have to work your way <laughs> <Right>? up. <Yeah. laughs> were, That's the only I, way to do it. I thought about this actually because you know how they're like equity versus equality, and the thing now is like you know equity is where like people that start from a place that's more disenfranchised need more help they should have that for progressiveness too where if you come from like racist old school italians it should count for more if you're like kind of woke you know right it's like it's that bourbon about donald sterling from the nba where he was like oh he, he didn't see what you're hanging out with black guys at the game he didn't care otherwise you know it's like it's not really reasonable for a guy his age right yeah Well, I mean, really, honestly, within the context of society, I haven't progressed that much. I mean, I've always not been (laughs) racist, but um, I've, you know, been more consciously aware of things, you know, so. I know, I know more particular words for things. Sure, I know how to, yeah, I know what words to use to get out of trouble. Exactly. (laughs) I I am. God, sorry. I, think I'm sorry. I think I've gotten dumber as I've gotten older. Like oh, my me for sure. Is, my brain is not firing like it used to, you know? Yeah. I'm worse than that. I couldn't remember. For sure. Yeah, I couldn't remember where Dracula was from, and I, I played him for Halloween. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I like yeah, how you say you physical. played him for Halloween as if you like booked it. was method. <laughs> <laughs> it was a part. It was real nice. It was a serious production. Yeah. I, uh, my mom I was, did a uh, good job. <laughs> I was in Arizona and I was, my niece is in seventh grade 
and she needed some help with like her math homework, which is like pre-algebra at most. And I oh, yeah, went no way. way past that school. I, I looked at this and I was like, I have no clue what the fuck is going on. Is somebody is somebody eating um, sunflower seeds? Does I, anybody I hear wish. that crackle? It was. Oh. I think it was the. Uh, it was my. It was my headphone against my beard. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right. No, no worries. Wait. Yeah. So you're. You're. She does math the wrong way now, right? Like they do math I, the yeah. wrong way now. I saw. <laughs> uh, in the news. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of people complaining about that, especially from Ohio, where they do math wrong now. It's like. It's weird how they do it. Well, physically, you know, like, of course, our bodies are going to deteriorate. And our minds are deteriorating, too. I played 21 with my niece, and she's all into basketball. Like, she can dribble and shoot, and, like, she's been she's been playing. She knows how to play. But, like, I'm the big, fat, drunk, fun uncle. And so all I right. went down there, and, like, I did, like, a turnaround jumper and made it. And then I, like, switched from three-point. And they're, like, all, like, you can play basketball. I was like, yeah, I played basketball like all of my youth, right? And I'm like, okay, but I won and I made sure that I won. But like literally at 20, the shot I made that was 21, I walked off the court and I puked. <laughs> like, First like, of I all, what do you mean like, you made what? sure that you won? Did you rig the game? I mean, I'm, no, I just, I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm not letting, these kids aren't going to beat me in basketball right you now. You put in your all. How, yeah, I was like, I don't care how winded I am. There's no, there's no way they're gonna beat me. You know, I want to, I want to play twenty one. Um, what is moving uh, around on the desk the... there? Did something fall? What's that? It... That was on, that was on Derek's. Something fell on Derek's world. Yeah, no, yeah, something did fall on my world. I can keep hearing, uh, like, uh, I hear. I'll get rid of this guy. No, it's is that not what that. It is? Is it that? It's, it's gone now, right? Yeah. It, it is gone. Yeah, so it was, I can oh, it that's so weird. Hear. But that's, but why would, wait, does an earbud work? Do those earbuds work like, like the, like the speaker thing is in the bottom of it? You might I have like noise so. cancellation or transparency or something. Well, the, the microphone's obviously also in the earbud, you know? So, yeah, uh, it's got to come from somewhere there. Well, yeah, I don't know. It was just weird what it was making. I've never heard that before. I'm sorry. I think it probably sounds better for the listeners, too. Oh, it's all, it's all sorry, good. Sorry, I try and make it a good experience for, um, for everybody. <laughs> sorry. No, for real. I worry about the product. Like, I'm very worried. I mean, <laughs> we get it. You, no, I know. I'm, I'm like, we, we're getting left behind in uh, the world. In the world. <laughs> yeah. We really are. It's like, I mean, like terrestrial radio and Sirius XM and things like that are all going away. Oh, the, like we, I said in the group chat, we should name, we're going to rename Bushwick Bears the official Donald Trump podcast because that's going <laughs> to be the only medium. Yeah, that's going to be, no, no, no. I just want to, he's going to have to buy yeah, the name Derek, from hold us. Hold on. No matter what we name it, I don't think it's going to work if you keep screaming into your microphone. <laughs> Very impassioned about this. I don't think you realize <laughs> that you have a good microphone that you don't need to scream into. This is how I do stand up. I can't help it. I'm very excited. I've trouble Fine. compressing the episode. You, you know what? You do Fine, not I'll say it from like here. That. I'll say it from here. No, just say it softly at the right distance because there's nothing soft about, about me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a teddy bear. All right. So, anyway, so I think that uh, <laughs> this here, is here with quit interrupting <laughs> this is Michael Barbaro. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I needed to interrupt you. You had no end to the bit. I was trying. No, to I say. didn't. No, I no, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Anyways, what I'm saying is, we need to name this the official Donald Trump podcast because he <laughs> is not going to be able to be on any sort of like regular media. And if, it's just like it's just like when the internet started and somebody registered www.ford.com. Or like www. you know coca cola. com because th that way the big company had to buy that name from them and he's right. only going to be what on you're the podcast. Saying. I no, what like you're no saying. way someone hasn't done it already. Well, also I don't think you can just trademark someone else's name. They would probably still be able to lay claim to it. 
Okay, would that would give us notoriety. I, I, I think you can just maybe <laughs> physically dominate him into. <laughs> <laughs> that idea was no. That I, all right, that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, and I think we lost Jericho on that sad note. We missed. We lost He'll Jericho. Oh on no! The I can fail hear him horn. chuckling. I can hear him chuckling. He just <laughs> I just like the idea of physically dominating. I, I, I've been on the. I've been like on the road a long time. I'm getting lonely, you know. Human touch. I miss it. Um, yeah. I hear ya. I, uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> is, your, is, is your wife still out of town? Yeah, she is. Ooh. Yeah. You guys need to hop on a little private call after this. And no, we talk enough. Out. We talk enough. <laughs> oh, um, I meant you and Jericho. Oh. <laughs> on a no. private, on a Jericho's, Jericho's um, lady friend is, is visiting him. Yeah, is that's that so? true. Oh, that's true. Great. Yeah, he's yeah. going to pick her up at the airport tonight. Yeah, well, we've had some unfortunate um, stuff happen in the household. Sure. Um, so my wife can't come back. She's very upset. Very, very upset. It's a very touchy subject. But I'm what are we going to do? You know? Construction? No, no, no. no. It, I, I, I'd rather go into it off air. <laughs> well, glad you brought it up. <laughs> I did. Are you guys? Are you guys okay? No, you asked. You guys asked if, if my wife was home, and I said no. And I always had to clarify because Fair. everybody, everybody comes up to me and is always like, uh, <laughs> "All right, we're." Everybody's always like, uh, um, you know, you come across like aggressively single, or that you and your wife hate each other. And uh, I always have to just like make sure there's good public knowledge that my wife and I love each other very much and um we just are adults who can you know it's like yeah. like how how many how many wives sent their husbands off to world war one or two and they're gone for like fucking years so what we're gone for like three weeks it doesn't mean that we don't <laughs> we're adults let's like let's be adults about this stuff oh you know? no well let's hope he comes back um but i was gonna say that's kind of like were you going to say you look like he chomped? No, no. I was going to say nobody knows on the audio that he's not. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say um, that's kind of the opposite of like, you know, how people on Facebook or online will like post a ton of lovey dovey shit. And you always know that's the couple that's fucking screaming at each other in private and like on the cusp of divorce. <laughs> and every time oh. they're like, argument doesn't end in a divorce they post on facebook how amazing their partner is basically because they know they mm -hmm, just came close mm -hmm. <laughs> so um i don't know if he'll really i don't know if i should say his name or not there's another comic who we, we're all friends with and i'm friends with him great guy i don't think he'd really care if i said but whatever him and his wife got married um he, he's from the Midwest, his wife's from Maine, I'm from the Midwest, my wife's from Maine. We both got married October uh, four years ago. This comic is clean, professional, like clean, like a clean act. Right. He's um, professional and good comic too. I really like him a lot. I consider him a friend and whatnot. Young, handsome, beautiful young wife. I think I know um, who you're talking they, about, but yeah. Yeah, they they never like they never seem like they got any fights or anything like that. You know what I mean? And like you would think like by my act, he always like he put her on the cover of his album. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. And oh, so yeah. of course I know. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. And and me, my wife, my act is like, yeah, my wife's a bitch. Blah blah blah. I'm like, I'm kidding, but like I'm just doing right. like relatable dude humor, like married guy humor. Yeah, but I think and, that honesty also the fact that you can like kind of razz her is a sign of security in the relationship yeah well they're divorced and yeah. that's what i think the thing is is that but if you looked at the two couples and you put them side by side when they initially got married and you were like which two is going to make it three Who's plus years make it? you know who else made you it? would everybody would have everybody would have picked them you know yeah. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Well, they they also look like something out of like a Sears catalog together. Yes, very Ooh. much. Um, uh, well, we're we not chose them. We, the name. 
we, we, oh, yeah, okay. we're not saying the name it was another couple that got married the same time that my wife and i got married and they're divorced you know it'd be a great um, concept for a podcast is just like what? a podcast where we constantly allude to things with characters and people that we can't say out loud <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing oh. <laughs> uh, well i uh, all right it was <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you gotta bounce it. For I'll repeat it. It was. <laughs> that's who it was. There you go. So, that's actually like- the, I mean, the thing about the thing about marriages is, is if the if the stats are right, you know, fifty percent of them fail. So that means one of you two is gonna get divorced. Yeah, probably. You I know think what though, I- I'll say about those stats is. Another comic that I will not name that we also both know and like uh, that's nice and funny <laughs> has been divorced many, many times. And so it's not just a matter of one out of the two of us getting divorced. There's also like, you know, like five of us might not get divorced while another one gets divorced six or seven times. Yes. <laughs> Some people that's are true. able to, to carry a significant part of that stat. <laughs> Some people just like the institution of marriage. Yeah. And divorce. So, so so can I ask you guys a question? Real real quick, real real quick, real quick though. I think a good I thought a good podcast idea was a podcast where my wife and I rip on other people who got married around the same time we did, but couldn't make it happen. And we just (laughs) analyze their marriage and why it failed. (laughs) You do that about all marriages. I know historical marriages, like why this didn't work. What did you do wrong? Um, Anyway, sorry. Can I? What yeah. do you guys think? So say, and this is just hypothetical because I know that you're both incredibly happy and successful and everything is going perfectly. Um, yeah, for sure. What if, if you did get divorced, do you think you'd get married again? No. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I want to, personally, I want to have kids and like, I want to have a family and, and that kind of stuff. So that's sort yeah. of the way that, that I would do it. No, I'll, prob- I'll probably drink myself to death if I got divorced. If you got divorced, all right. Yeah, I mean, like that's. I mean, that's one scenario. Or I would just like try so hard to like overcorrect. You know, this the, is- like I'm middle middle aged and I'm still cool and I've got a full head of hair, so I'm gonna start doing blow and drinking with twenty year olds again. This is corny. <laughs> Nothing ever did blow, but but I got go a ahead. piece of advice from that same uh, this guy who's been like helping us out with this PA house. He's forty seven and he's got five grandkids. He's been married for you know twenty something years, and yeah. uh, his his pretty simple piece of advice, which obviously is easier said than done, but he was basically just like, you know, if you just accept the fact that you made a vow. And that option is off the table. He's like the people who are really honest about that. Then you find solutions to whatever problems there are when the when that option is literally off the table because you made a vow. Obviously, there's yeah. exceptions to that, but I think that some people don't go into it with that mentality in the first place. And so, you know, it's pretty easy to to go towards divorce if like that's a solution for you. You know. Well, that that's like what every if like every like person you ask that that's like older that's been married a long time they always have the same reason always it's the same exact answer and i remember my grandma said this when she was still alive because they her and my grandpa stayed together for you know 50 plus years or whatever right and she was like i was like how do you do it and she's like we just didn't get divorced that was it i mean that's that's really like the I mean, it's not the only rule to it, but it's also just like nobody else can really define your marriage for you. Because like I've had friends who have had troubles in their marriage, very, very serious troubles. And um, where like, you know, either my wife or, some, you know, I myself will go, well, I'd fucking leave that person. But the other person didn't leave. And then they're just like, well, why didn't they leave? And they're like, well, because that's what marriage is. You work through it. Right. Yeah, I will say know, also, and- out of the people, like the divorce stories I know and the friends that have gotten divorced, not all of them, but a pretty significant majority, there's something to do with substance abuse with one of the partners. And then, uh, and that's that's kind of a thing. Yeah, pretty often. Um, from what I've seen, it's usually because um, 
the dude doesn't make enough money. <laughs> <laughs> that's honestly that's a big one. That's why my parents got divorced. Yeah, I mean, if there's anything that my that would make my wife happier in the marriage would be if I made more money. <laughs> um, can I ask you, I'm going to ask you a personal question, Boris, and uh, you, you, you were in UCB like level four, so you can answer it however you want. Um, so <laughs> this, is, this is an improv based question. Got any suggestion from the audience? Well, <laughs> what I'm saying is it zip zaps you, up you, before I answer this question. <laughs> you've done improv before, so there's no reason to not answer. You can just lie. Um, so now that like you are married, things are going pretty well. Uh, and you just said what you said. So you're just like letting it fly in your old lady all the time or what? Uh, you mean, are we, uh, using, using protection? protection? Yeah. You, or no, no. I'm just saying it's like, is she off birth, birth control? control? Are you, no, are you she's on. Like, she's is the on baby factory, flying? is the baby factory open for production? Yeah. Uh, no, no, she's on it, but it's a discussion that we're actively having of, one to plan on not when being the, on it. This, this, and I also, so you know, that? I have already promised and I am sticking by it that when she gets off of it, I'm going to stop smoking weed. Mm. Yeah, that's a good, that's an interesting And not just development for a multitude of reasons in the sense that one, I probably, if I'm going to raise a child, I can't be like, at least shouldn't be stoned as much as I am. And I think that the real definitive way to start that kind of change would be an, you know, outright stopping nice long tolerance break. But also I heard like the one thing I've heard about weed is that it does fuck with your testosterone levels. And I feel like if that's something you're trying yeah. to do, it might be better to not. And that's for sure. There's a bunch, so of, much. a bunch of pussy smoke weed, you know, uh, exactly. my, I have a, a, a dear, a dear friend of mine, uh, was an avid weed smoker in similar situation similar age as you uh married and then decide they decided they were gonna have kids and they were having some trouble and maybe they and you know they started like thinking that maybe it's because they were a little older they started going to see some doctors and doctors like no nah, all your levels are fine you should be fine and i i i asked my friend i was like two things are you still smoking like a ounce of weed every couple of days he's like yeah same as always i was like maybe calm that down and i was like how much are you jerking off he's like i jerk off every day i was like maybe stop jerking off and just putting it in your wife what and why they, would he be doing like, that if he's trying to have a kid dude, i was like i was like you're trying to yeah have a that's like, stupid a habit and dude baby came like oh, right away i understand the like, habit stop jerking off. aspect of it for sure but that's like if you were trying to like pass the bar or like deliver a dissertation but you were just constantly reading books that were irrelevant to your subject <laughs> right you know yeah. just just wasting all your brain power it's a jericho why did you ask uh why'd you ask boris and not me because you you you're not like you didn't just say you're you want to have a kid someday i mean because I, I already yeah. ha i already have one <laughs> Come on. you gotta go back to france <laughs> i'm kidding now we're, i mean out of the two i mean we don't you we don't we don't have any protection or anything well i mean that's i mean other than just that like i'm i guess my wife's too old <laughs> does she want to have babies I, that's no. not really true though i mean she's yeah. up there i mean she's a couple years younger than me but that's old for a woman you know? <laughs> I think like yeah, I think like thirty seven <laughs> is considered a geriatric pregnancy. Oh uh, well she's way past the marvels of modern medicine, you know. They're yeah, no, nah, we, we are we are act, we are actively in that regard. And I'd actually be worried if we did have a kid at this point. But I also I mean, we neither her or I have been financially stable or like really in in a in a situation where it was really feasible until like this year. I'll tell you uh, what though, on the two things about that. I mean, one, like I always think about that, like what sort of position would I want to be as far as finances or just security, but man, oh man, do poor people have kids all the fucking time, 10 they times make more it work. than anybody all else. The time. And yeah. not only do they make it work, but I also know a lot of like, including some comic friends and, and like friends in the arts that have had kids 
And somehow, as soon as they had kids, it's like they either prioritize. Like I have a buddy of mine who like is brilliant comedian, improviser, like does a lot of really interesting stuff. And, you know, was like doing fairly well, but like still figuring stuff out. And then he had two kids and now he's like directing commercials and shit and just kind of like, you know, you, you kind of like- Is it Ebert? Because I was just going to say Ebert. No, but he was already- Like Dave Ebert. Oh. That guy's just a, a machine of doing good work, basically. But yeah, um, yeah. But he had kid. I mean, he has. A, I think at least one kid. At least one kid. See, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm talking with, about yeah. somebody else. But like, but I know a bunch of people like that where like they they weren't like dipshits, but they weren't like succeeding necessarily in financial terms. But once they had kids, they just found themselves prioritizing the right things and like you know, they it's kind of like. Yeah. You know how when you have like no work, but you have all this stuff you want to get done and you don't do shit because you just have so much free time. But then as soon as you get busy, sometimes you just you just have to ration your time and schedule stuff. Yeah. And so you actually end up getting more of your like, co- like I have times where I get more comedy shit done when I also have to work. Whereas when I just have a bunch of time off, I'll just bum around because it feels like I have forever, you know, I do right. nothing. Anymore. That's exa- I mean that's exactly me. That's exactly me. The last year because I'm yeah. with COVID. I haven't I haven't been unemployed. I haven't done hardly anything. But you're right. When I was I, working three jobs, I got everything done. You give if you want something done, you give it to a busy person. You yeah. give somebody something with nothing to do, something to get done, and won't get done. And that and that's I mean I say that it's re- I'm still busy like relatively, but it's definitely not as busy as I would be if I were working more. Um, or working at all, really. I don't but. I don't wanna I don't wanna have kids. I like I like um living like a child, you know. <laughs> you are your own baby. You know, I have baby. some I have some friends who are still like super deep into the Peter Pan like sort of thing. And yeah. For some people it works. Um and for some people it's like I don't know if this is really you. You know, and I don't think. How do you think I, it works for me, Derek? Well, it. I think it does work for you, and I, that's why I wouldn't say otherwise. <laughs> Not um, to your face, at least. No, huh? I wouldn't. No, uh, the, no I think I there are certain there are certain people who, for what they are, is that's who they are, and it fits them. But you're a larger than life personality, Jericho. But yeah. then some some people are like you know just boring in the first place and it's like just have just have True. a family you're not right. gonna do anything else with your you're life just anything. fucking have kids and there's yeah. a reason why people have found it satisfying for thousands of years <laughs> yeah just like come on dude just go have a baby i'm tired of fucking hearing this you know what it is from you and and this isn't gendered i do think both gendered just do this but especially like politically speaking when i find some people that reach their mid 30s and they don't have kids some people just try really hard to start raising the whole world and it's like you if you just yeah. focused and had one or two children that you could tell how to live and how to go about life instead of trying to tweet <laughs> how the entire country should behave like right. you're just doing this because you know you're impotent and have no real responsibility or accountability. You can just scream at everybody, but you don't actually have to do anything. Whereas if you had a child, you can not only scream at them, but if they fuck up, it's actually on you because you didn't do a good job raising them. And it's like you're just trying to raise the country because you're too lazy to just fucking admit. Ah, man, I went off too much. Here, what do, what do you no, it's fine. Or, I got no. <laughs> Boris, what do you think? You think one kid, two kids, or you want like a litter? You want like six kids? No, I'm not a Hasid. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I has want... nothing to do with your your creed. I was just no. Curious. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just saying. No, I want two kids. I think any more than that, unless I was like filthy rich and did. I can't even imagine. I can't imagine being so bored that two kids wouldn't be enough. Like I feel I have. I want kids, but I also want to do other things with my life. And I feel like more than two kids, either you're like just a crazy person that's like taking their pathology out on collecting children or you're like super, super rich. And you just you're actually just passionate about raising kids, in which case, good. That's for like you. like Brad Pitt. That's I don't know. Either. I don't I don't know. Yeah, he didn't Pitt have well big, 
But he like picked those up at the store. It wasn't well, he like had, he, he went had, through well, the. He has a few that are his, but then he, yeah. then he adopted. But it like, so but like, I got a cousin back home in Ohio who him and his wife bought a restaurant before the fucking pandemic, yeah. ha- and have two young kids. My he's younger than me too, and talking to my younger because I'm the oldest one. So talking to everybody in my family who's younger than me with multiple kids, some of them two, three kids and mortgages and businesses that makes me feel like a child still. And it's, but I also like have never been responsible enough to have a kid. I never wanted to end up like my dad. So I never, um, my pullout game is just too strong. Like (laughs) my pullout game is like, that's one of my, have you gotten your levels tested? I guess, right? I, Is it your pull out game? I, I just one day I decided that I want to have kids, and it was realized that no, my pull out game wasn't terrible. I was just sterile. I mean, kicked in the nuts <laughs> too many times. I just think about something that blew my mind is that my grandpa, the one who's still alive, was about my age when I was born. My yep. grandpa was like yeah. forty two when when I was born. Because my mom's the oldest, and I'm the oldest of like the twenty grandkids. Uh, and I, I was thinking about that when I bought a Darth Vader comic book today. Yeah, yeah. My my grand my grandpa was thirty eight, thirty eight or thirty nine. We became a grandpa, it, and he was my age when he was became a grandpa for the second time. And yeah, yeah. It's it's bananas. But like we, we're a different generation, though. It, That's it, the it thing. Like different. you know, I I got into this like not to make it too philosophical, or whatever. But I got this like discussion with a, a buddy of mine who was talking about how like medicare f- medicare for all is a human right sort of thing which is um a, a silly argument but then also at the same token um having it cost any amount of money is also a silly thing because i had a friend of mine who almost died within the last like two weeks they had an emergency um surgery in which they you know there was potential if it wasn't addressed in enough time that they could have passed away, right? Right. And it was a thing that 50 years ago, they would have just died, right? Yeah. Right. Like all this, like, all this, like, um, talk about like how we operate within society is very, very new. We've been around it's, for thousands of years. It's it's, it's, an, it's, it's industrial society, right? So it, it, it is privileged, but it's a result of like, we live in like a post-natural world where we don't we we are so far removed from uh the everyday life the majority of us are especially in america of having to like work in the earth for something attainable to survive and when something goes wrong for the most part you just die because there's nothing they can do for you (laughs) sure 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 but 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 that's that's why it's like kind of silly to me where it's like um well it, because it's new and you're just born you think you're just entitled to it like right and also too it's like what does that mean unilaterally you're entitled to like the most high-end obscene levels of like whatever but also at the same time just because you have money doesn't mean that you should automatically have better access to health care because just because you have a lot of money doesn't make you a more valuable member of society. It makes you a more valuable member of the market. I love I blame. talking about this stuff and I could get into the nitty gritty, but we would need like a fresh podcast episode to go over why I think medic. Well, I, I anyways, mean, anyways, but, but my I, larger, my, my larger point is, is always like, we're always like, yeah, our grandparents had, however many kids and however many grandkids and responsibilities by the time they're our age but like my grandpa was also an alcoholic who crashed his car into trees a bunch and cheated on (laughs) my grandma and like that's what grandpa's did yeah he wasn't necessarily like happy and he wasn't necessarily present (laughs) for like his children so it's like so what and i'm not saying he was like you everybody makes mistakes i would be the same way if i had kids i would make mistakes or whatever kind they were but it's like it's not it's not automatically better just because you did it it's riskier and i think it's probably more fulfilling but we also learned from the mistakes of our parents and don't want to rush into that kind of shit you know what first of all first of all derek happiness has nothing to do with it we're grown men we don't we're not we're not supposed to be happy it's true. Okay. What grown man have you ever met in your life that was happy? 
Okay. That's not the issue. And I blame, I blame I've my I've known mom. some, I've known some and they all come off as pedophiles. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's something wrong. If you meet a grown man that's happy, you're like, what the fuck is, is I met, I met grown men who are happy. They're either rich or single or both. So, but what I'm saying is I blame my mom. This is my, it's my mom's fault because I came from that generation, which you guys might be in it too. But my mom was like, hey, if you work hard enough, you can be whatever you want to be. Right. And so now I've spent like the last 10 years of my life after doing 10 years of music, I've done the last 10 years of my life being like, I want to make a living going to dark rooms filled with people getting drunk and telling them about my uncircumcised dick. And mm-hmm. I kind of have done mm-hmm. that. You know, it's my mom's <laughs> fault. That's not a real job, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of what I did. Well, before the pandemic, that was one of the things I did. And that was what I spent my time on. It's her fault for telling me I could do whatever I wanted to do. And fuck, we're grown men. We're not supposed to be happy. We're not, it's like not even allowed to be happy. Okay. <laughs> I totally disagree. I would much rather be happy. <laughs> It'd be cool. It'd be cool to be happy, but it's, it's not, it's just not natural. I Both mean, I'm not unhappy. Solid bits. If, if anything, I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty. It's a comedy podcast, Boris. I'm fucking trying over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm in a goddamn Motel 6 room that smells like fucking stale cigarettes of like a shitty casino and there's no shitty casino. The walls are fucking orange. All, I spent all day trying not to jack off. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm signaling the Vikings for them to come in and... <laughs> I feel like a fucking viking right now i'm dying on a fucking ship of dysentery <laughs> i don't know what, what? that one was what sorry, was sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I was looking know what that was i was looking for a very specific one but i don't know if i can find it <laughs> oh man what a what know, a play this has been fun yeah. i think <laughs> we got deep it's been, it's been a very philosophical. I'm episode I'm scared to, to have a, a geopolitical conversation on this podcast with you two fucking Trump supporters. <laughs> Anyways, you gotta quit saying that because people fucking believe that, and it makes me so. You know what? Today today was Trump's last day in office, and I'm so glad he's gone. I'm so glad he's gone because I have lifted my moratorium on bad fucking comedy. There's a fucking fatwa on all bad fucking comedy now from you fucking losers who couldn't do nothing but just say dumb fucking Trump shit for four fucking years. I could make one Trump joke the entire fucking presidency because there's so many shitty fucking people who tie their shitty stupid morality to their shitty stupid comedy that I couldn't fucking say nothing, but I'm glad he's gone. Now you fucking losers who aren't funny are in power and I can't wait to fucking tear you ass hats down. Democrats suck as much as Republicans. Fuck you too. Sorry. I think ass. um I think uh I, I do I do agree with many we eat every day. We're gonna need licensing <laughs> for some of these. I uh I agree with many of those words, and I think that many of those people who have been so angry these next four years will hopefully settle down and have some kids and calm down and focus on that. <laughs> Bam! And quit oh. comedy. <laughs> That's what we yeah. call a callback in the business, guys. Yeah. I like exactly. it. I think we can wrap it up. Uh, we got a pretty good Fuck yeah. note, Mark. We covered a lot of subjects. We solved a lot of problems. <laughs> I don't know. I still have a lot of problems left. I hope everybody no really had a, had a fun episode. I'm sorry that um, I I got so antsy over Jericho's beard noise. It's no, all good. I it, it, we fixed I, it. I just get. I got. You just that care about that quality. Going. Is it so I do. Right. Well, I can't wait till we're all back in the same room because these Zoom ones, as we know, are not my favorite. It's going to be and good. We we got a studio we have so ready much, for us. Yeah, we have so much of a better energy in studio. Do you I'm know when are you back? You are on your way back. back. You'll be back I'm this week. You think? I'll be back in a couple days. Yeah, I'm, I think I should. I should. I should. I should be back by like Monday or Tuesday. Not if the car makes it. Cool. True. Cool. Well, uh, it's been a fun one, everybody. At Bush with Bears. Are there any other ads? Oh, yeah. What's our Venmo? 
We always uh, we so never look we, it up. It doesn't after. matter. Let's not. <laughs> Let's, get get on there. Morning. All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks for hanging with us, everybody. Have a Bye. good one.